Welcome back to Pickett's Corner. On this episode, we're going to keep on working on this 1971 Monte Carlo, known as Queen. We're going to be doing the line lock. Uh, last episode, we put in the calipers for the wheelwood disc brakes, um, or wheelwood brake calipers, I should say, for the stock replacements. Um, on this one, we're going to do line lock to lock those front wheels and do some wicked burnouts. Kind of getting this car ready for a gender reveal. we got a baby coming in and my new daughter or son. We're going to find out what it is, and that will be on this channel as well. But we got to get this car ready to go and get it ready to do some burnouts. So let's get started. done some disassembly off camera to kind of uh, get a head start on placement for the line lock solenoid. I had this cable here or this brake line here running down to the proportioning valve. I kind of cut it and did some um, bending on it to kind of see what placement. I've ultimately decided right here on the steel fender that I have here to go ahead and mount that right there and get that good there. Now it'll this solenoid has multiple locations coming out of it. Um, I got, I'm going to go inlet here and then I can come out any, any of these locations or all of them if need be. Um, a lot of people run in here and then they'll run both, hot, uh, both sides of the front brakes off of this. I'm going to go ahead and utilize the portioning valve, proportioning valve. Since this line here is bigger going into there, I still want to keep it about the same size. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to plug two of these and then this side here, I'm going to run into the portioning valve to the front brakes. Let's get started. This kit has multiple dies. We're gonna find out exactly what size our pipe is. In this case, it's quarter inch. So these have two different sizes, a 45 and a flat. 45 degree and a flat. So we're gonna go 45, so that's what flare we're gonna do. And we're gonna do a double flare. So we put this in. We're gonna make sure that our end is just a little past what the die is there for and close this off tighten it down we're going to switch this to quarter inch position one Go ahead and flare our first. That's a bubble flare. Now we're going to go to a double flare. And there you go. A really good double flare. If you do not have this tool from K Tool International, I highly recommend if you're doing brake lines or anything, steel lines, fuel lines, anything of the sort for any extended amount of time. All right, let me get the other one done.
All right, I'm back here in my shop. It's been a few days. Um, for the life of me, I could not figure out what was going on, so I had to take it to some mechanic friends of mine that work in a mechanic shop down the road, um, and they were able to help me kind of figure it out. Um, as I do this part-time, I ran out of time, and I had an appointment I had to have this car at, so I had to kind of give up. But mainly, what I ran into was I could not get the brakes to bleed. For the life of me, I could not figure it out. I've bled brakes a lot in my life, and this one, they would not bleed at all. So originally I kept getting air in the master cylinder, so I thought it might have been master cylinder, so I replaced it. Uh, I'll show you what I replaced it with. I replaced it with a wheel wood um, master cylinder and a proportioning valve, for a adjustable proportioning valve. And I'll show you all that stuff here in a second. But uh, yeah, so that did not work either. Um, I started getting some fluid to the front brakes. But unfortunately, the back brakes weren't having an issue. Come to find out I had a collapse line in the back. And the issue also was that with these units sitting at an angle from stock, they they like to pull in air from the front um, because the newer master cylinders are made to sit on more of a flat plane. Um, so, unfortunately, um, I don't have a power bleeder. I have to use somebody in the car and do a two-person kind of bleed. So I had to have them help me out and get me power bled and get everything taken care of. Anyway, so I'm going to show you kind of the plumbing that I had to reroute and do when installing the master cylinder off camera. Sorry I didn't get it filmed. Kind of in a hurry. Need to get this car um, to a baby gender reveal for my new baby coming up. So the wood master cylinder and a proportioning valve comes with the kit. This proportioning valve I can adjust less and more brakes to the back and kind of adjust the backwards and front of how much brakes I want to go back there. Also, this front solenoid right here, or this front sensor right here, is a uh, brake sensor. It comes with a brake. So this actually helped me out because my brake switch was not very good. Sometimes my brakes would, my brakes would stick on um, as these old cars and plastic and stuff like that gets weak. This actually helped me out. So every time there's pressure in this system, it sends the brake lights and turns the brake lights on. So I got that all wired in. I got the sensor wired in. So this time I wired it, uh, I plumbed it a little bit differently. Everything hooked up and in. Um, I did have to change the plumbing on a little bit. So basically what I did is I took both parts of the proportioning valve and I ran them into a T, then ran it into a step up of a bigger line into the line lock. Then I came out on both sides of the line lock for the down below to go to my actual brakes. Now that we've got all the plumbing and everything done up front, including bleeding the brakes and getting the brakes working again, um, we're going to talk about running the wiring and button location and how to use this thing. Um, <clears throat> for I've already done everything uh, in the car, but the button location is important due to safety. You don't want to accidentally hit it, stuff like that. And then how to use it um, is very simple. When it comes to wiring, it comes with instructions and a wiring diagram with the kit. It's extremely self-explanatory and very simple. Um, power, run to the switch, then run the switch to the solenoid and ground the solenoid. Um, very simple, but um, I'm going to show you kind of where I put it. And you can decide from there if it's a good location for you or if it's a different location. Um, and kind of go from there. For me, I put the switch right on the back side of my shifter. Um, main reason I did that is it's not in a location where I'm going to accidentally hit it. Even if I rest down here, it's really hard to hit. So I physically have to reach around and hit it with my thumb. And also, it is it is a switch that you'll have to hold down and let go of. So you'll want it somewhere that's comfortable. Um, this is the switch that came with my kit, so it does fit. This is the intended location. Um, if you do put it on your steering wheel, which mine, um, I didn't want it on here, uh, stuff like that, you can. Um, you just have to get the proper switches for your car. Um, being a street car, I did not want it on my steering wheel mainly because of um, the drivability factor of it so but I wonder right here so that way I can always use it and hit it so how you use this thing is you're going to press down on the brake 
All the way. Tight, tight, tight. As high as hard you can get it. You're going to press down the solenoid. You're going to let go of the brake. By doing that, you have pushed the brakes in the front. You're now then held the solenoid, which holds those brakes. It closes that solenoid. And then when you let go of the brakes, it releases the back brakes. So then when you're running, you hit the gas. And <clears throat> when you're done... When you're done with your burnout and you want to move forward or the car is getting squirrely and you need to move forward to let go, you just let go of the switch. Very simple, very easy, nothing to it. Now that you've seen how everything's installed and in, on this car, we're going to go ahead and end this episode in style with the rest of the episode being nothing but burnout. Enjoy. Enjoy.